Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at how to layer textures inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift. So my last video was basically just a general overview of how to do this. So I'd say go and watch that video first. It's a little bit shorter than this video is, and it gives you a pretty good idea how, of how to do it. But if you have any sort of questions, you don't really understand something, then come back to this video and we'll go through it step by step on how to actually create this cracked asphalt road texture. So first thing I wanna say is all of these textures that we're gonna be using are from Quixel's Megascans library. So if you just go to their website and then go to Megascans and go to the free tab, create yourself an account, you can grab all of the assets that we're gonna be using in the video. So I use this 3D plant, this ribbon grass, which you can use as well. Uh, this crack, cracked asphalt, these painted road lines right here, this road line right here, and then this asphalt patch as well. So go and grab those and you can follow along with the video. But let's go ahead and jump on in and show you how to do this. So first thing you wanna do is enable your redshift as your render. And once you do that, we're gonna set up a plane and we'll just make it editable. Then we're gonna right click and make it a redshift object. Then pop over to the geometry tab and click on override and then tessellation and displacement because we're gonna be using displacement for this texture. Then we're gonna create a redshift material. And let's go ahead and open up the shader graph. So from here, we want to first off, just disable our reflections just because it's gonna make it a little bit easier to see our texture. But the first thing, in the, well, the thing we're gonna be using throughout the video is going to be obviously our textures, but this color layer node right here. So drag and drop that on into your shader graph. And we're gonna use the out color as our dis diffuse color. And then just for now, we're gonna disable layer one. So we're gonna go ahead and drag in our, uh, our cracked asphalt texture. So we're gonna use the albedo the displacement and the normal for this texture. So let's just set our normal down here and then our displacement down here even further. I'm gonna drag this over here and then bring this over farther as well. So we're gonna set this out color as our base color. So the reason we're gonna set this as our base color is because the Cracked asphalt is what we want as the bottom most layer. You can think of it as just if they were painting a road and you would have obviously the asphalt at the bottom and then from there you would paint the lines on top of it which is what we're gonna do as well. Which is what this color layer node is gonna be doing as well. So layer one will go on top of the base layer, layer two will go on top of layer one and then layer the base layer as well. So, so on and so forth throughout all of these as well. So let's go ahead and enable our layer one and then from there we're going to bring in our so I think it's the decal is painted lines so we're gonna need the albedo and then the opacity so you can set up the normal and displacement as well for this uh, this texture or that the painted lines I should say in general but I don't think they really add all that much to the texture and it's basically just a waste of time so we're not gonna use that in this video, but let's go ahead and drag this out color into our layer one color, and then our opacity into our layer one mask. So now if I drag this texture onto our object, and then I bring up our redshift render view, you can see if I enable this, that we have our lines being painted on top of our, our texture right here. So if I zoom in on these, and I go back into our shader graph, you can see that if I set this blend mode from normal to add, which is what we're gonna be using for all of the, the painted lines, it changes the texture slightly. You can see, if I zoom in on one of these, if I set this back to normal, you can see that it's just being the texture on top of it and it's overtaking all the information below it. But if you set it to add, it's gonna take in some of the information below it. So some of those little rock things, they're the little you know, brighter lines. So it's like it's faded, but it's on top of the texture below it. So that's what we're looking for. We want it to look like it's actually on top of the texture below the asphalt texture. 
So I think that looks a little bit more realistic than just the general normal mode. So we're gonna use that for all of our painted lines. So from here, we want to set the, we don't want these lines to be so fat. But first off, if I set this scale to two and two, and then our opacity to two and two, you're gonna see that our, our lines here are, you know, they're wrapping along our surface. So there's now double the amount of lines and we don't want that. So we wanna disable this wrap V. And now obviously our texture is right here like this, but we, uh, we want it obviously in the middle because it needs to be in the middle of the road. So let's set our scale back to one and we're gonna go with like six so they're not so fat. And then one and six here again. And you can see our lines are a lot better off here. Let's go ahead and offset them. So we wanna set up our offset to, uh, let's go with like, I think it's negative 0.35 is what I used to set it in the middle of this texture. Oops, not 0.35, but negative 0.35. Uh, not looking quite right. So negative, but like negative 0.5. Nope. That's going to be too far over. I can tell already. Maybe negative 0.4. Um, something like that. That looks pretty close to the middle here. So we'll, we'll stick with that for now. So now they're, you know, a lot skinnier and they're in the middle, which is what we're looking for. But to set up our textures, just make it easier so we can change it later. We're gonna set a, a new node here and then use Expresso in general. And then we're gonna use a constant node. So we're gonna use this constant as our driver for all of our offsets, uh, just so we can change one and it's gonna change both of our textures here. So let's set this from real to vector and then we used a negative 0.4. So let's put negative 0.4 here and then just pipe this into our general UV remap and then offset and then just set this to offset as well. And you see it doesn't change because it's the values are just the same. So this is obviously X and then our Y and then Z, which I guess were our UV coordinates, which is what this is. So um, this way, is our V and then along this way, the way our lines are going would be the U. So uh, so this would be the U and then this would be the V. So it's shifting it along negative 0.4 along the V texture coordinate. So let's go ahead and set up our next painted line. So drag in, we're gonna go to painted street lines and then our albedo and our opacity again. So we'll set these up as layer two for our layer two mask and color. And then we need to obviously enable this as well and then set this to add. And here you can really see that it's, you know, taking the information below it to affect it as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and make this not so fat. So let's make it something like 20. We'll try and then and then the opacity and it's gonna freeze on me because I forgot to uncheck. We don't want wrap U or wrap V for either our opacity or our albedo. So let's go ahead and actually I'm gonna leave it as wrap U, just not wrap V. So if you set that one to 20, you can see our line is kind of aligned along the edge, which is what we want. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and select both of these nodes and copy and paste them. And then we're gonna drag in our pick whip to our color layer here and then set it to layer three and then for the mask as well. And then we can go ahead and enable this and set it to add and we got it all set up, except for it's in the exact same spot as these two up here, which we don't want. So let's go ahead and drag another constant node over here. 
And then if I just drag these into our offset, you're gonna see it change immediately. And then for this one as well. So now it's more towards the middle and that's not what we want. So these coordinates are from like a, uh, a zero to one. So we want something like a negative 0.95. And that sets it along this other outer edge over here. If I bring this over towards the middle, you can see it's more towards the outer edge there. So I'll set this back somewhere like that. And then now we have all of our lines and everything set up. Now the only thing we have left to set up would be our pothole. So let's go ahead and grab those textures right now. So decals and then pothole. So we need the albedo, the displacement, the normal, and then the opacity for this one. Use a bunch of different textures here. So let's set our albedo in here along with the opacity, but our normal map we're gonna drag off over with our other normal map up here and our displacement over with our displacements. And then we can drag this into our, if I can grab it, if, into our layer four, have that fully set up. Layer four mask, and then we'll drag another one of these constants out, out as well. And we'll just set this back to zero for the time being. So we want this to not wrap in the U or the V because we just want one pothole. So let's go ahead and disable that for both of these. And then we're gonna set the scale to something like three and three, and then three and three for this as well. That'll give us a decent sized pothole, but we need to enable our layer four so we can see it. And then we wanna keep it as the normal blending mode because we want this to completely chip away from everything below it. We want it to fully cover it up because if you see a pothole out in the middle of the road, you know, most of the time there aren't painted lines, just painted over it, they fill it in or, or fix it. So we want to avoid having any of the lower uh, layers information on it. So keep that set to normal. And then our constant here, let's go ahead and set this up. And then we can start changing where this is at. So let's go with like, hmm, a negative, maybe like negative 0.4, put it somewhere like that. And then a value for our U, we'll just do negative like, uh, negative 0.4 for that as well. And now we're somewhat in the middle, but let's go ahead and rotate this as well. So let's set our rotation to something like, both like 40. And then for our opacity, we'll set this to like 40 as well. All right, so that's overtaking a bunch of our lines here. Let's maybe not have it so much in that. Let's try like a 0.5 and maybe a 0.6. Yeah, so now if I look, zoom in closer here, it's overtaking this line right here, just, you know, cracked the asphalt right over the top of it. So that's more what we're looking for. But it still doesn't look, you know, quite right because we're missing the displacement and the bumps as well, the normals. So the reason that we use this texture node instead of the normal, so if I go and drag this out, so if I have a normal mode or a normal node in here, you can see if I click and drag, and so I have all of these and I have all these uh, spooled out. You can see I have no way to actually rotate the texture in here. So it would never line up with where we have our uh, texture of our pothole right here in our, our view. So we obviously don't want that. So we would have to use this, just a regular texture node. And then we wanna set the pothole information to the same. So we'll use three and three and disable the wrapping and then set our rotation to 40 as well. And then we can just pipe in our constant for our offset. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that normal map. So now this is lined up exactly where we want it, but we wanna use our bumps. So 
we want to make them actually be bumps. So let's drag in our uh, our normal for our asphalt into our texture input for our bump here, and then our bump map here for our texture input there. And then we want to layer these on top of each other. Now, if we use this blender, it's not gonna not gonna exactly give us uh, what we're looking for, or uh, not what I wanted, anyways. Uh, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the color layer again. So if I drag this into our base color and into our layer one color, and then have our opacity in here, you can now. Okay, let me let me explain a little bit more on our bump blender here. So the I don't believe our opacity will work exactly correctly with our, our blend weight here. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but uh, I don't think it was working exactly the way I wanted it. So I this is the reason that was the reason I didn't use the bump blender. But it essentially works the same way here with our um, our color layer node here. So if we drag this into our overall bump input can see actually I think I need to set these to uh, object space normals and that may not be right either let's drag in a Sun and sky rig because we need to be able to see now so if I rotate this on up take a look back here yep it's now a lot brighter you can see if I go back and uh, disable our bump here and see the difference that we have so obviously it it darkens it up because it's adding in some shadow information which is all in there correctly where we want it so we're gonna we're gonna stick with that but let's go ahead and move on to our displacement here so for our displacement we need to set up a displacement node for each of these so drag in displacement and then we want to drag this into our texture uh, map and then same for this as well and then for this we want to make sure that since it's our pothole texture we have all of the information set up the exact same way so it lines up properly in uv space and again drag our constant into our offset and then again we're not going to use the displacement blender here so let's make sure I have our displacement set up correctly which I have it kind of set up but we're gonna set the maximum displacement to something like five and then displacement scale to like three so maximum displacement has to be set to something higher than the displacement scale otherwise your scale will only go up to a maximum amount of whatever is this is set so we obviously want that higher or equal to, at the very least, what our displacement scale is set to. But you can set a maximum displacement scale, so if you set up some texture controls, like I have a video on how to do that, you can use a null to, you know, um, like if I here, I'll show you. If I create a null, and then... If I can use this null too, if I drag it up like this, you can set it up with Expresso so that you can use its position to affect the displacement scale and uh, do it all through the viewport. So that's how you would, or that's one of the reasons you would set the maximum displacement so you can't, you know, crank that way too high. But let's go ahead and pipe in our displacement to this displacement blender, and I can show you why I didn't use this. Uh, displacement blender node so if I pipe this all the way into our displacement here and I set this blend weight all the way up to one you're gonna see if I bring this back up hopefully you can see it uh, it's kind of hard to tell uh, I don't know how well you can see it so if I drag this back down you can see kind of the uh, it's it's really hard to hard to tell uh, whatever I forget what setting I had set up but it's displacing this texture as a square so 
because this isn't it doesn't have any opacity set up like no way to set up any opacity it's just using this entire texture to blend into this which is not what we want uh, I wonder you might be able to set up the opacity again for this but I thought it was giving me weird results so I didn't use it Let's go ahead give it a shot looks like looks like maybe it's giving me the right results here let's go ahead and take that back okay so yeah you can kind of see the square here uh, looks like actually the opacity is working for this as a to set it all correctly so only this is being displaced. So you can go ahead and use a displacement blender, I guess. Uh, and you can probably do that for the bump map as well. Use that bump blender. And let's actually just go ahead and try it. Like I said, I thought it was giving me weird results, but maybe it was just my eyes being dumb. So let's set this up. Use this as our base input. Use this as our layer one. And then our bump weight we can set. Just make sure, yeah, okay, so we wanna use this opacity as our bump weight. And then pipe this into our overall bump input. And it's changed. So if I take that back and then pipe it back in here, Yep, looks like it's working. So you can use the bump blender, I guess, as well. So just make sure you're piping in the opacities correctly into the, the bump weights because that's what's going to be determining where your texture is being applied. So that is basically just how you set up all this. And again, you can go through and move this pothole around to wherever you want just by using this. Uh, this constant here so let's maybe negative 0.2 we'll see where it takes us so it's moved it over here now or you can set it to like negative point what seven that took it not negative seven point seven and that takes it over there or negative point two and it brings it off our camera view but still on our on our texture so more on the line now you can kind of see takes over the line so just use these constants to, to change them and you know set up their texture however you want and that way you don't have to go through individually and change everything the, the exact way that you want but you could actually set up a probably set up a constant for the amount of rotation as well we'll give it a shot here just to uh, just to see you can actually probably let's set this to 40 and then pipe this into our rotation looks like nothing changed it's good and then our rotation here again looks like nothing changed which is good so yeah you can actually just set this as a reel and then you can use a constant to change your rotation and you don't have to play with anything there as well so the shader graph here kind of looks a little confusing but when you break it all down it's a lot of the same stuff uh, just kind of piped through different nodes here so hopefully this helped you out and you can use this to kind of get the uh, the look that you're going for on and actually this doesn't look right actually because we forgot to pipe the rotation into our um, rotation here and then our rotation here and now it looks correct so <laughs> my my mistake there forgot forgot a couple notes just make sure that you have everything set up correctly and everything piped in to where it's supposed to go and you'll be all good but hopefully this helped you out and you can use this to create whatever textures you want that way you don't have to go and 
you know, re-export any sort of textures from other programs, or I know you could use Quixel Mixer, but uh, that would be not as, uh, as, you know, customizable without having to go back out and go into other programs. Or you could use this with something like Substance Designer or Substance Painter or whatever, uh, create textures outside in those programs, and then you can use that more so Substance Designer, I guess. And then you can use those to layer them, them on top of uh, whatever you want. So use that to, to create whatever you want and create some cool things and hopefully it helps you out. But thank you guys for watching. Again, I have a bunch of other tutorials on my channel for you know Redshift and, and Cinema 4D. So if you want some other quick tips on how to do different things, go ahead and check out some of those other videos. If not, I have a bunch more videos coming out soon as well. So make sure you guys subscribe and uh, you won't miss any of those. But thank you guys for watching and have a good night.